Kumar here with Haim Ghazali, who is fighting Ryan Couture at Bellator 209 and joins me all the way from Israel. Haim, how are you tonight? I'm good, good. I'm cutting what weight, ha- but I'm good. <laughs> how is the weight cut going, by the way? I'm uh, going good. I got like uh, 10 more pounds, and I got two days. So it's good. On, the, on and, my way. And talk to me a little bit about what you're doing in preparation mentally for this fight because you faced Ryan before. So what will you lose? What will you look to do differently this time? First of all, I started to work with a, a, a sport doctor, you know, like, and, you know, like all the mental stuff, all the mental stuff, you know, all the, all the thinking stuff, all the teach me how to use my brain correctly before a fight and how to think good, how to, you know, how to live my life like as a professional and like not thinking about stuff that's going to make me down or stuff like So everything is changed now, you know. I'm coming to this fight like stronger, stronger in my mind than ever from all my fights until now. Okay, good for you. So much of the audience that is involved in fighting, our viewers, don't understand the importance of the mental game. And one of the things that I wanted to ask you about, which I think you will agree with, is it's probably going to be a very big advantage to you to be able to fight in your home country from a mental perspective. Can you talk a little bit about that for us, please? Okay. First of all, the mental side is for me. After all these years that I'm fighting, I understand that it's like almost uh, eighty eighty percent of the fight. You know, mm-hmm. if your brain is weak, all the body is weak. So I started to think what was wrong in the first fight and what was wrong in my last fight. First fight with Ryan, I'm talking about, and my last fight mm-hmm. in uh, Bellator. So I decided it's not my body; it's my it's something in my head that I need to fix. So I went to a camping, like a training camp in, uh, in the States. And I went to like a doctor, the uh, name is Patrick. He's a mental training, you know. So he's like teach, teaching me like twice a week. I'm doing it today by, by uh, Skype, you know, overseas. But twice a week, how to use my mental side, how to block any bad thoughts, how to, to be focused, like like I train my body, mm. teach me how to train my mind, you know, my brain. Very it's like, interesting. And I just, and, and yeah, and I found out that there's a whole, like a world, like a whole world that I didn't know is exist, you know. Stuff like people taking, like normally, suddenly you see it's nothing, you know, because you know oh. how to use your brain. Mm. Um, I think that's going to be one of the biggest successes in my fight. That's interesting. Plus, you will be fighting in your home country, so I think that would be a big advantage for you mentally as well. Yeah, yeah. When I'm fighting over it, something else. Because when I'm fighting in the States or something, other countries, you know, I'm going to the ring alone. The crowd is not with me over it. Something else. Everybody's with me. I'm like... You know, I'm going to the ring so that the the energy of the crowd, everything mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. boosts me up, you know, to go to the ring and like you know, last fight over here I won like after forty something seconds and you know, with the submission. It was the second mm-hmm. uh, submission in uh, Bellator uh, history, like the fastest mm-hmm. submission. So mm-hmm. I believe it's gonna gonna have a hard it's it's coming over here, it's gonna be hard for him, you know, to fight. Not like if he fought with me in the States. So, Haim, one of your favorite moves is the triangle. Let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, the triangle, why is my favorite move? Because when you start Jiu-Jitsu in Israel, it was like, I think it's the end of 90, 94, something like that, when we saw the first UFC and the crazy basic, but it didn't have people to, to train with. Like, the triangle was like one of the move that you saw in the beginning, you know, so I started to practice it all the time by myself. I, I took friends and practiced triangle, 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 suddenly I see I can catch, can catch everybody with a triangle, you know, every, for every, from every, every direction, I don't care, 
So that's why it's become my move, you know, the triangle. Because I started it like in 94, practices by wow. myself. Yeah. So, Haim, you and I were talking before the interview that some of the information out there regarding your height against Ryan Couture is wrong. You are actually shorter than Ryan Couture, or are you the same size? Uh, like we're the same, I think. Maybe he's a little bit more than me. Uh, I'm like 180 meter, meter, 180. I don't know how much in, 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 in feet and stuff like that, but 180 meter. It's nothing. My son is uh, taller than me. <laughs> We're going to get to questions about your son in just a minute because that's a really interesting story. Before we move into some other questions, what are some of the holes you can take advantage of this time around with Couture? That's something else that I did also for this fight. I bring like uh, some specialist, like uh, his name is like uh, oh, it's a sports scientist. Okay, it's scientist oh, okay. in English. Okay. He's a sports scientist. He's worked with a, a lot of national uh, Olympic team in uh, in Australia, in Canada. He's like, I bring him, I show him the fight. He show he saw the fight with Ryan Kato, and he took all the stuff that Ryan did. I did, mm -hmm. and he was like, yeah, and he's also stay with me all the camp and like fixing everything I need if I need. I don't know, like let's say like. My hand was weak in the second mm -hmm. round, so you need to fix your hand. You need to fix your leg. You need to fix this one. You need to fix this one. And you build all, all that my training camp around this thing. You know? So, like, I bring a lot of specialists for this fight, you know, and all kind of stuff that normal athletes doesn't use, mm -hmm. you know, like a fighter. Mm -hmm. And they build my whole program how to be mentally strong and physically strong interesting you know? very interesting congratulations on being the first israeli fighter to be in madison square garden what did fighting there mean to you uh, that mean all my career you know think about it i started to fight when i was six like train when i was six years old and and my first uh, competition was like when I was like 13 years old, like in a community center in Israel, mm -hmm. you know, like with only the parents come to see you. And mm -hmm. suddenly I'm in the Madison Square Garden, you know, the the mecca of the fighting world, you know, Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson, everybody fought in the same place. And there I am, hiding from the, you know, community center, coming to fight over there. So it was for me, it was the peak of my career. I didn't care Good that, uh, yeah, but I didn't, back then I didn't care that I lose the fight because this fight was hand by the, you know, by point and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so for me, like I was like 44, I think, or 43. So I said to myself, you know, 43, Madison Square Garden, you know, three rounds, you know, the guy is like younger than me, like 10 years younger than me and he didn't, mm -hmm. he didn't finish me. Yeah. Right. So I thought, yeah, it was good, you know, good experience. But now it's going to be different. Now it's going to be, it's coming to the war zone, you know, it's Israel. Yes. Over <laughs> it's going to the death. <laughs> One of us is going to fall. Nobody, nobody going to finish the fight with point over here. It's I, all I me know or him. Yeah, yeah. It's it's in your blood over there, more so because it, you have a rich history of fighting, and uh, you really, your country has been warriors for a long time. I'm not sure if the U.S. audience has realized that, but you folks have been, it's kind of your spirit, is it not? Yeah, because if you're not going to fight for a living, there's no, not going to be no Israel, and not going to be no Jewish, you know? Right, right. So you need to fight for, to, 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 to make, a, you know, that people live, you know? Cause right, right. It's not like if you're going to lose the war, so we lose the war. If you lose the war, there's no, no more Israel, no more Jewish. Mm -hmm. you know, so we have to win all the time. Mm -hmm. so Ryan said you... to me, when, go, on. go on, go ahead. Yeah. Ryan said, well, Ryan said in one of the, you know, on Instagram, I don't, I don't, I, like, I don't f afraid to come to the Holy Land. I'm gonna, I'm gonna win in the Holy Land. So I told him, yeah, that's what our enemy said mm -hmm. for the last seventy years. <laughs> I don't even see nobody win over it. So. <laughs> oh, you're funny. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to that fight. As many of our fans worldwide on DAZN and Paramount Net uh, are going to be, w- be able to watch that fight. Talk to me a little bit about why you got the name and why you are the Israeli Batman. Oh, that's a, that's a long story. Yeah, I liked Batman, Batman when I was like 16 years old. Start to collect stuff of Batman, start to do stuff of Batman. You know, like I got like, a whole museum in my house of uh, Batman. Stuff from the movies, stuff, you know, like prop stuff, like comics books, and and it stuck, you know? Mm-hmm. Stuck, the, the Batman stuck, stuck, stuck. You know, everybody call me the Batman, Batman, Batman. All my tattoos, like a lot of them, is Batman. Right. And I like all this stuff that, you know, is wearing dark, like black, like uh, fighting crime, not a cop, you know. And most of my life I was like a security guard in clubs and stuff. So I was wearing black and fighting crime, but I didn't was, you know, not a cop. So it's like stuck in me, the Batman. And then uh, Mike Goldberg said it in uh, one of the Bellator, the Israeli <laughs> Batman. And then it stuck. <laughs> Even my T-shirts, my new T-shirts for the fight, is the, the, the Israeli Batman. Yeah. yeah, we have a funny picture of you from Instagram where you show the time before the fight in a skinny Batman and then the other Batman photo after, ah, you know, right yeah. before you go in the fight, which I love. I love that photo. I love that cartoon, yeah. rather. Let's talk a little bit about your son. You must be very proud because he's making his debut as well. Yeah, my son is like, he's this he's 17 and a half. He's going to be the youngest one in Bellator, you know. You know, it's funny because he's going to be the youngest fighter and I'm going to be the oldest fighter, you know, in the same event. Right, right. So he started to train in like he was like three years old. Then I put him in judo with my friend. It was, a, you know, like a national uh, Israeli team. I put it over there. He started to learn the bases, and then he's like grown up, like become six. He moved to jiu-jitsu with us, but all his life he lived like in a house that like people train. You know, the gym was in the house, so people come to train every day, and like was born into fighting, like training, right. like martial arts. So it's uh, he become a fighter. You know, mm-hmm. and the people ask me what you push him to be like that. I go. He born, he born to this, you know. He born to that, to this world. So, so he become a fighter, you know. And it's like, and he's good in it. So he's gonna, he's gonna go, you know. He's gonna go to the biggest level. I believe in like two, three years from now. Good for you. Will you be in his corner, or how will that work? Since you also have a fight that evening on the same no, card. So, 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 the decision that I made is going to be difficult for me because I'm not going to sh- see the fight even. Oh. Not only they will be in corner because I cannot, because if something happens or something, it's going to destroy my fight also mentally. Oh, okay. Okay. So I cannot, I cannot be involved in this fight. Hansel Gracie is coming to be he's in, in his corner, and his coaches for me is going to be in his corner. Uh, so I trust Hanzo to take care of him, and uh, I told him, "You win, come to my dressing room." And tell me you win. <laughs> if you don't come or you decide not to come, I don't want to know the results, you know. But if you probably if you're gonna win, he's gonna come. So. Well, let's hope he does. Can, that would be exciting yeah. for you, for the fans in Israel, the father and the son team. I'm sure the crowd will go crazy. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, cra- it's crazy, you know. They did it before, but not in, a, in like a big, like mm-hmm. like major event, like like Bellator or UFC, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is going to be the first time, and I'm happy to be a part of it, you know, to be part of history, you know, like doing something that nobody going to do or nobody did or was going to do. And, Besides being involved, very involved in the MMA and fight scene in your country, you're also a promoter in Israel. Can you talk to us a little bit about that as well, please? Yeah, so it's not that I'm just fighting. I'm also closing all the undercards. I'm also in charge about all the medical of the undercard. I'm also in charge about all the producing stuff 
of the fighters, mm. like all the pictures and all this wow. song and all the, if they have a problem or something like that, I'm in charge of everything. So it's not only charge on the Friday, I'm also in charge of selling tickets because I want the show we're going to make it. So yes, I understand that. I'm, I'm, I'm selling half of the show by myself. And I'm talking about myself by my hand. You know, <laughs> coming to people, give me money and selling the tickets. Like that, half of the show. Show is like 8,000 people to 9,000 people. Wow. Every year, think about it, I'm selling like 4,000 at least. Crazy, and that's Crazy. wonderful for you. Wonderful for you, yeah. though. Yeah, because I'm trying to make the MMA in Israel something big. This year, I've been uh, a, a new PR that work with, working with me. His name, his name is Michal. She's like put Bellator very like in the mainstream, like I'm talking about like every other TV show. Like morning show, evening show, news, every wow. place, everybody talking about Bellator. So we did this year like a big jump in the make Bellator very, very famous in Israel. And now, you know, I believe it's going to be greatest in the next event and the next after in the event after that. Because today everybody knows what is MMA in Israel. It's not, right, uh, this right. is my mission to, to, to make this sport. Bigger than 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 soccer and uh, and basketball in Israel, you know. Mm -hmm. Because this is the this is the only sport in Israel also that can bring nine thousand people to arena, and it's not soccer and not uh, mm -hmm. basketball. Mm -hmm. This is the only sport, you know, MMA. Mm -hmm. So I work like to make it go to the news and make it go to the media like as a right. sport. You know, because everybody talking about violence, you know, over here, it's like they're thinking like 20 years in in the state, from the state. Right. So that's right. what I did. Like, put it as a mainstream, as a sport, as something like everybody can do, everybody can, you know, love it. So the show right. is like women, children, everybody's coming today, you know. It's crazy. I see from your Instagram, you also play piano. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to play nothing. <laughs> I see the piano. The, the piano know how to play the piano. I just did over there. <laughs> what song did you finally decide to caption that video with? Uh, no, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a piano that play by himself. So I sit next to him and like play. Like I, I, I play like I play like I play the piano and everybody. Oh, you play the piano. And then I put my hands up and everybody. Else. I don't know how many messages I got because of this uh, video. I know, I know. I loved it. What do you do in your spare time? It doesn't sound like you have a lot, but what do you do? Nothing. Home. Oh, uh, watching TV and stuff like that. You know, I like to be home. But you know, when I'm before a fight like that and before pro pro mm -hmm. production like that, I don't have time to breathe even. Yes. You believe me, I'm selling tickets until today. I'm cutting weight and I'm selling tickets. And I got like order to tickets. People come tomorrow to the hotel to take tickets. And I have photo shoot tomorrow. Wow. I have to go to the TV tomorrow, and I'm still selling tickets because I wanted. Mm -hmm. I want the show to gonna be full. That's what. I, that's my. That's why my mission to to make the, the the show with full people. You know, um, a lot of crowd, a lot of people. That. That's going to be the success of the event. Before we go today, I want to wish you good luck, Haim, and thank you for your interview. And I also want to remind our viewers in the U.S. they can catch Bellator 209 on the Paramount Network on Friday, November 16th, and also on DAZN for our international viewers. All right, I'm going to practice my, my little uh, Hebrew here, and I hope I'm doing it right. So Haim, Belaha Lahaim. Todavera Ion. That? <laughs> almost, almost. <laughs> almost. <laughs> almost. <laughs> the right way, but almost. All right. Well, that to cool, all the cool. people in your country, I say thank you for your interview. I wish you good luck. Thank and, you. And uh, we for look forward me. to seeing you at Bellator 209. Thank you for having me. Thank you.